in to the Cubs Recap Podcast, a presentation of our Recap YouTube channel and available on the audio side anywhere you get your podcast with my guy, Gordon Wittenmeyer. I'm David Kaplan. Okay, G-Dub Cub, we are inside of three weeks from opening day, and the Cubs have been playing very good baseball in spring training. I know it's spring training, but they have been the playing well. Street, dude. Say again? They're about to win the Cactus League. They look good. So let's talk about where this team's roster is at because say Might Suzuki be doesn't look like he's walking through that door at any time soon. So who's going to make this team that Mike Tuckman? Is there a guy that you look and go, wow, I didn't see that coming because I think Hayden Wisniewski has locked up a spot in the rotation. Those, those are two of the guys for sure. Those are two of the three, I think, most interesting things left in camp because you're right, man, two weeks to go rosters all but set. I mean, they've, they've basically said this, right. They've um, uh, they're talking about Nelson Velasquez and Chris Morrell starting in the minors. Now they're not saying it out loud, but they're giving those indications because they seem to have everything else locked up and, and uh, knock on wood. They've been remarkably healthy all spring, especially compared to some other teams save for say a Suzuki. Which brings up Mike Talkman, right? The local kid, Fremd High School, Bradley University, former Yankee. When he got a little bit of a chance with the Yankees, he he showed some serious power. Yep. Um, and all he's done since Suzuki has opened up playing time is take advantage of it. He's made some really nice catches out there and right. He can play center, which is a big deal because Rossi says Ian Happ is not a candidate for for the backup to Cody Bellinger out there. So to have a guy who can handle that when Bellinger's out of the lineup is a big deal. I think Talkman's in unless something weird happens between now and the start of the season. And Wisniewski's the story of the spring, dude. I mean, so, what do you think of him? Wisniewski has been sensational. And this is not a dude. I said this to you either last week or two weeks ago. This is a dude who knows how to pitch. He's not a guy who you go, boy, he's so raw, but he throws 100 miles an hour. This is a dude who knows how to pitch, knows how to use his breaking stuff, and he's smart, and his control is really good. I'm just telling you, I'm really excited to see what he can become. He's got definitely the best slider on that staff, and one of the best potentially in the league if he gets a chance to show it. And you're right, he knows how to use it. I wrote a story about him toward the end of uh, December, about how he could be an X factor, maybe the X factor for this team, the, the one that you're not thinking of. We talk a lot about Kyle Hendricks, but Wisniewski was a guy coming into spring training with the newfound depth of guys they signed in the offseason that would have been really easy just to store away at AAA to start the season so that he could get innings in and be ready to go whenever they needed to plug. But what he's done in that battle for the fifth starter job, which is basically him and Samson. Some people say Assad, but not really, uh, is phenomenal. Like you said, and, uh, he's, he hasn't given up a run this spring and, and, right. and it's, and that's not, that that's not, uh, he has pitched that well. He's been dominant. Samson's given up six home runs. Samson's still trying to find it. The bigger question might be what you do with him. Do you put him in the bullpen? Uh, do you have some kind of a hybrid five and a half starter role, piggyback type guy um, for maybe anybody who throws a short start uh, along the way? I mean, you kind of got Keegan Thompson for that. So uh, I, I still have faith in Samson, but, but my God, Wisniewski has shown to be a difference maker so far. So if you look at the rotation and we're going to leave Kyle Hendricks to the side, Kyle Hendricks is not ready to go probably till mid-May is my guess. Maybe late May. And then you hope that you can yeah. ride a veteran pitcher uh, with, you know, a less than probably six weeks of the season not on his arm. So yeah, and let's be clear, he's he's he has had no setbacks none since, since the start of the year when he began in earnest this throwing program. They're just going to be very careful with him. Exactly as they should be, but what a lift he provides, uh, assuming he does come back and he's healthy. Okay, so I am not 
all in on the WBC. There's too much college basketball going on, NFL free agency. So I have not been really paying attention much to the WBC, but I do read the box scores. NF what? What? NFL free agency. Dude, it's baseball season. What the hell are you talking about? The Super Bowl is over. My God. The NFL dominates. I don't know what you're talking about. So Javier Assad was very, very good for Mexico. Marcus Stroman, very, very up good. The U.S.'s ass Sunday he night. Did. Marcus Stroman, very good for Team Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. So if we've got Marcus Stroman and Jamison Tyone and Justin Steele, like you look at those three guys, you're hoping Kyle Hendricks comes back and is, you know, like the four guy there, the number four. Is that fair to put him there? Sure. I mean, look, when he when he talked, when he was officially uh, shut down, he had already been shut down. But when he finally talked to the media right before he went home uh, at the end of last season, he outlined all the, this stuff, uh, what he hoped for. And and that and what I talked to him about and I actually talked to him again about it at Cubs convention was when you come back because of the way this is situated, one of the benefits is you don't have to be the guy at the front of the rotation, right? I mean, you could just slide in wherever. If you're the guy that's in that four spot right at the back end, then all of a sudden you guys are that much better. And he said, hundred percent, totally. Um, he he's on board with that thought, uh, as much as anybody is. So I, I agree with you uh, on that. And if Wisniewski's in that mix and don't forget Drew Smiley, I mean, you've got, so, you've got some depth if, right. if, if guys are otherwise healthy. Okay. So if you have Drew Smiley in there, you wait on Hendricks, you've got Hayden Wisniewski. How good is that rotation in your mind? Because I'll tell you my opinion first, it's missing the today a guy at the top where you go, oh, God, that guy's good. That guy's the, you know, all-star. But it's got solid pitching throughout. It just doesn't have Max Scherzer, Clayton Kershaw on his prime, Justin Verla. It doesn't have that. If you score an average number of runs this year, and that's a tall task for this lineup, honestly, um, then that rotation over six months, in addition to the fielding prowess that you now have with some of these signings um, gives you a chance to be in play at the end of the season for October. Doesn't Agreed. give you a hell of a lot of chance in October because you got no bona fide game one starter and look at some of those teams that are going to be in the playoffs and tell me how you're going to match up in games one and two. I, I, I don't see a, I don't see a toe to toe, matchup I see having to steal a game and hope for a long series um, so that if they manage to get there without picking up somebody impactful or without Kyle Hendricks returning to 2016-2017 form then they're, they're going to have a hell of a time but by the way to that point you were talking about the rotation I'm going to tell you why uh, Cubs fans shouldn't be a there's a team out there that Cubs fans should be way more worried about than the Cardinals. Yeah, and I know where you're gonna go. The Milwaukee Brewers. Take a look at that friggin' rotation. It's very good. No, not very good. Maybe the best in the league. I mean, it's right up there. Um, I mean, you start off with a Cy Young candidate, Corbin Burns, with a chip on his shoulder after after they dragged him through the mud in arbitration. You got Brandon Woodruff, who used to be the ace of that staff before Burns came along and, and, and took over. Freddie Peralta. Freddie Peralta. Matt Lauer's their fifth starter. Or not? That would be Eric, you goof. Eric Lauer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, Matt Lauer's pitching for the Cubs. They've got Adrian Hauser. Adrian Hauser's the other guy. I mean, they, look, man, they they go. At, Wade Miley's a brewer now. Right. They go five deep with guys that can help you win a playoff game. Aaron Ashby. Against just about anybody. And Ashby's pretty damn good, too. And if Miley's healthy, now, now you start looking like you have depth there. I'm telling you, the Brewers are a scary team. I mentioned Woodruff. Woodruff said a, a week or two ago, he talked about missing the playoffs last year by a game and how, you know, I talked to the chip on Burns' shoulder personally. 
that whole team has a chip on its shoulder because of getting that close to the playoffs and missing it. And a lot of people, because of that small market and, and be, because of how exciting the playoffs were with the teams that were in it, forget that the Brewers were that close and that good. And by the way, the Cubs had a winning record against them. They're 10 and nine, maybe 11 and I eight. Think, yeah, I that, think it was 10 and nine. That's the difference between the Brewers making the playoffs or not. You don't think that they're going to be uh, pretty motivated and remember that uh, during the course of the season. That's the team that if I'm a Cubs fan, I'm more worried about than the Cardinals. And let's see, he is a free agent after this year. Which one? Corbin Burns. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You've already got your eye on. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you stick with NFL free agency? That shit ain't happening, man. He's 29 years of age. He's pissed off. Why would you not want to go get that guy to front your rotation? I mean, how many guys have we said in the past year, why wouldn't you want to go get that guy if you're the Cubs? And how close did they come? Eh, Aaron Judge, eh, that is your guy. Uh, Trey Turner, who was probably top of their list. I, I believe he was top of their list when it came to the shortstops. Nah, Dansby Swanson, uh, which is fine. Dansby Swanson's fine. Um, you know, look, uh, oh, your boy, your boy, uh, Verlander. I mean, you go, you go back to 2017. They weren't getting these guys that you come up with. So, ah, yeah, the Verlander, Verlander one is the one that will always bother me because he begged to go to the Cubs and they said, quote from Theo. Now nah, we're good. Okay. Let me you know how that latest, works out. You see the latest on Quintana? Yeah. Shut down for at least three months. He's going to miss half the season because that rib injury is worse than they thought. Jeez. That's Crazy. brutal. And that's brutal. tough, man, because he's a good dude, too. He deserves better than that. Ooh, Jose? He's oh, a really yeah. good dude. Great dude. Really good dude. I remember walking up to him and apologizing for calling him a Buick. Excuse you should have. Up. I did. And you owed him that. Jeez. I did not me. owe him that. Yeah, I wrote about that when you called him that. I interviewed yeah. you for that story. You did. Correct. Bullshit. But Oh, really? So Charles Barkley, should he go apologize for calling Anthony Davis street clothes? Barkley played in the league. He can call anybody in the league whatever the hell he wants. I co I scouted in the league. <laughs> I don't think that's the same. Probably not. Um, okay, so you bring up points about the Brewers. They do have outstanding pitching. The St. Louis Cardinals, for whatever reason, they have a good team. I'm not telling you they don't. They just don't look to me to be a juggernaut. Do you yeah, the, the thing about them is they're not bad anywhere. And they do two things really well, as well as anybody in baseball. They catch the ball at almost every position. And they've got corner infield legitimate thump. Mm -hmm. And so those are classic characteristics that uh, can win you a lot of ball games. And that's why it's a big part of why they win a lot of ball games. And they have good enough pitching uh, up and down. Um, you know, as long as uh, Wainwright, uh, you know, doesn't eventually wind up in a rocking chair, uh, you know, it, by the end of the season, uh, they should be, again, you know, right there. And they've got resources, man. Every, every, they like to, to tell everybody, oh, you know, they're not, they're not a big market team. They're a friggin' big market team. They've got big market resources. And if, and if they're in a position where they can make a splash at the trade deadline, they also have a, a farm system that can pull something off. And e even like, I, I want to say they were in on the Juan Soto stuff uh, briefly last uh, summer. I mean, they could pull off something like that. Maybe not as big as that. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, maybe bigger, maybe Otani. But anyway, they, could, they, they have the money that they could extend somebody and the farm system to go get them in the first place. Okay, so let's talk about Pete Crow Armstrong. because defensively that dude's ready to play right now in the big leagues. No doubt. Right now. No doubt. Uh, By the way, also between the years, that kid's ready to play the big leagues. So right I've now. gotten to know him a little bit. I've done multiple interviews with him. I've spent some time around him uh, through our guys at obvious shirts. By the way, go to obviousshirts.com, promo code cap, get 15% off anything you buy there. So the, Interesting thing about PCA that I really find intriguing is this kid 
gets sent to the minor league camp. There were some people going, could he make the team now? He knew he wasn't going to make it. He's right back out there cheering his guys on. Like, this guy's all in as, like, one of my favorite players. That's what I'm talking about. The day after he gets sent out, along with Brennan Davis, he's at Chase Field with uh, uh, Triantos, James Triantos, another top 15 prospect in the system. There's not a lot of fans out there. It's Team Canada playing, you know, I don't know, uh, Team Podunk, Slavia or whatever. And I, I can't even remember who they're playing. But uh, he uh, he hits uh, Casey. Owen Casey's out there playing for him. Jared Young's out there playing for Canada. And these guys are sitting there. They got their own seating section to themselves. They're doing what looks like a damn wave when Casey's up. He drives in a couple runs with a single. He hits a home run. He hits a home run over that yellow stripe at Chase Field, and he's not mm -hmm. sure it's a home run, even though it's like 430 feet. So he's sprinting all the way around until it's about until he's about 20 or 30 feet from home plate, and he realizes it's been a home, it was a home run. So they're razzing him about that. There was an interview that got posted on social media. They've got he's, culture over there, man. I tell you, you know, you know, we we talk about those guys came over in the trades, right? Casey came over in the U Darvish trade, uh, uh, PCA for Baez uh, from the Mets. I mean, Wisniewski came over from the Yankees last summer. And, uh, and uh, I still stand by what I wrote at the time and what I've said on the air at the time that for a big market team to do this shit again a decade later is egregious and it's and it's it is an abuse of your fan base. However, if you're forced to do that as a front office by the powers that be above you, then they've gotten at least what looks like so far some pretty good pieces going forward. PCA hasn't played a day in the big leagues, and it's going to be a while before he does. Who the hell knows? Wisniewski's okay. still got to prove it. You know, Casey's got to prove it. But I like what I see, no doubt. Okay. I'm going to go back to something you just said because you know I love you and I think you're a very sharp baseball man. Oh, Jesus, that's, just a, that's just a dumb comment. It's egregious what they did because management told. Listen, if the if Jed and Phil really? combined, yes, would have done a better job in player development the first 10 years they were here, we wouldn't be in this position. I agree with that. Now, these are two different things, right? What I'm saying is once they got where they were, you had you had your – look, Darvish was coming off a Cy Young runner-up season. Granted, it was a 60-game season. But yeah. he's continued to back that up. And to the degree that the Padres just tore up his contract and gave him six more years. But you weren't going to win here with him. Sure you were. You were already doing it. That's the point. Were they not. were coming off of a division championship. Now, they, they no. maybe they had to trade a couple of guys. They could have kept Rizzo if they wanted to. They could have kept Baez if they wanted to. Now, you're going to say, well, it's a good thing they didn't. We can, we can have that argument all day long. What I'm saying is that they did it for money. They did it because of pandemic biblical losses. You reported it. We both know it. And that's, for this market size, Egregious. There was a, a, a book that recently uh, came out, um, Winning Fixes Everything. Evan Drellick from The Athletic wrote it. It's about the Astros. Yep. Remember, they tanked yep. for a bunch of years. They won some championships. There's a passage uh, in, in the back end of that book that talks about the pandemic. And they single out. He's got a, an executive, a baseball executive, singling out the Cubs for what they did because of short-term panic with their finances. So this isn't just me talking. This I'm is not disagreeing with you that they, the Chicago Cubs should never have to cut employees and do all they did. My point simply was, and I've said this to the people over there, this isn't me being personally attacking. I'm just stating fact. If they did a better job from 2012 to 2019, in player development, especially on the pitching side, they might have kept all the dudes together because they would have had more homegrown talent to try and win with. They did a bad I agree. job. I've written the same thing. I've written so the same thing point, over you go, and over again. You know what? Chris Bryant doesn't want to be here. Rizzo, yeah, but you're going to turn down but every 60, 10 years. 
If it doesn't go just right every 10 years, you're just going to blow the whole fucking thing up? No, nah, come on, man. You're, you're, you're not the Kansas City effing Royals. I'm not come saying on, man. you are, Gordon. You're coming I'm off not- a division championship. You're coming off five playoff seasons in six years, six consecutive winning seasons. You haven't done that like maybe ever. I mean, for God's sake. They and weren't not winning with these sports. guys. And not they once- did win with these guys. After I don't, that. I don't mean just, look, you're not going to win a championship every year. I mean, how many teams back it up with two consecutive ones? How many teams win two in, in three years? I mean, the Giants. Okay. If, you, if you had Baez at $160 million, Brian at $182, we would be choking on those contracts if we were the owners. Those, you're... You might be right, and you might not. I mean, you can, you can. I am right. You can't go back and assume everything's going to play out the same way. What I'm saying is that just to blow the whole damn thing up is something that a team of with the size of resources they have, where they sit in the marketplace in this industry, that should not. And and by the way, and this is the biggest point of all, the friggin' prices they charge, they should never do that. No I fan in this market, Let no me be fan clear. of that team should ever have to put up with it. Agreed. The Cubs should never have to go then through two rebuilds in 10 years. I don't disagree with that. My point was the if only the point. previous regime had done a better job, and a lot of that falls at the feet of Jason McLeod, Jason's a great guy. He did a bad job drafting. No doubt. That, There's no question that about CEO that. That's and Jed's front office. They trusted their guy, and he let them down. Had he the irony of that is, job. The irony of that is there weren't that many people they did trust. They were quick to move on from different people yeah. in different hitting positions coaches, of authority. Coaches, That's one out. that they – but because it was, you know, let, let's be honest. I mean, let's be completely honest. It was personal. I mean, they go way back. And, Correct. And, and, so, and so and that's it was my point. Hard. It was a flaw. They trusted him, and he failed them. Good guy, worked hard. It didn't work. Had they done a better job, this whole thing would be in a different position. Okay. Period. That has nothing to do with what I just said. Yes, it does. No. Yes, because in your your Wait. warped world, you are saying, guess what? The Ricketts should just keep spending. They didn't have a team good enough to win with. That's why they moved on from these what guys. They shouldn't and do. God bless Jed Hoyer. He's done a magnificent job to this point unloading Bryant and Baez and Rizzo and what he's done. Can they take the next step? We'll find out. But yeah, I the think next Jed's step's the fucking a hard part. Job. That's actually putting a team together that can win ball games in the major leagues. That's hard to fucking right. do. That's why no that group of players that did it, they won a lot of games. You can't say because they weren't winning championships every year that that's some kind of failure. Now, what you what I'm saying is that, yes, maybe there were a couple of those guys. You should have said, no, we're going to cut this guy loose. We're going to do this. We got this guy coming up on the horizon in free agency. We're going to go after him and get rid of this guy. Whatever. We're going to try to keep this guy. And it, they completely effed up the player development in, in, that, in yes, that decade. 100%. But that's not in debate. I've written about it. You've talked about it. We agree on that. But the answer to that is not to tank all over again. And that was, and that was primarily, if not all, because they cost slashed the payroll over biblical losses, over perceived biblical losses. And what was a short term economic hit. Gordon, if your wife comes to you and says, yeah, I think we should do this to the house and that house, you're like, hon, the foundation starting to settle, a a couple coats of paint and a new 85-inch TV and some furniture, it's still a bad house. We got to either fix the house or we're moving. That's my point. The house that they had wasn't good enough. So did it hurt? Yes. This time, I don't want them to have to go through a rebuild in 10 years again because I don't want them to F up the farm system. Cap, I'm That's not my point. I'm not charging people 90 bucks a pop to come look at my house. It, it doesn't apply. It's two different things. And 
and so you know you've got you you owe it to this fan base to keep a competitive product on the field while you figure things out period end of story i don't disagree with that well then the problem is they did, they did a horrible horrible job developing guys and at some point right okay, so now when you we're fix running it, out of time we're we're running out of time on bias Bryant, and rizzo so what should we do with them should we sign them because we we won in 16 and we had some good success no we're gonna have to rip the band-aid off and go this sucks i don't want to be here again that's my point uh, all right if, if you give way, him credit for steve cohen the other day after being in the game for a couple years, I realize now you cannot win if you don't build a farm system. Thank you for Pete Crow Armstrong, Steve. No kidding. And yet, what's he doing in the meantime? He's putting a hell of a friggin' team on the field with his enormous resources. That's what the Cubs need to be doing. I mean, it's all about what the solution is to that horrible track record with the farm system, Cap. I'm just saying the solution should never be in this market to blow it up, to completely blow it up. You got too many resources. And the thing is, like, especially I, I just talked about how the Brewers are, are a dangerous team to the you, you swamp them in resources. They're not the Cardinals, not so much. And it's not like the Brewers are a poor team. Everybody in baseball has money and, and can keep their players if they want to. But you've got more resources to do more things than the Brewers, so you should always be able to keep the Brewers at arm's length, or most often. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna have their prospects that come up. You know, the Ryan Bronze of the world once in a while, the the, the Corbin Burnses of the world, the Brandon Woodruffs of the world. But um, but you should, by and large, be able to keep them at arm's length. The Reds at arm's length. The Pirates at arm's length. It should always be about the Cubs and the Cardinals in the division. And the Cubs should use their resources to make sure that every year they're in it. Well, Gordon, it was a lot of fun arguing with you. I think we actually have some common ground. We just get there in different ways. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'll talk to you next week. And we are inside three weeks from opening day. For Gordon, I'm Cap. Make sure you subscribe on our Cubs recap podcast on our recap channel on YouTube and get the audio only version wherever you get your podcast. For Gordon, for our staff, I'm Cap. Take that.